First of all, reflect on what a great weekend it was for you at Newbury. Some lovely success. Elixir the Nuts. What a champion he's proven to be this season so far. Yeah, he's really, um, he's surprising me a little bit, to be honest. You know, it was a kind of a target to go to the Holden Gold Cup with him, and he always improves for his first run, so we, we've managed to get a run into him. But um, whether it's sort of like having a 17 year old on his back or whatever, but he's, he's certainly improved. You know, we know he's a class horse back in his day, but. He's a bit fragile, and, and this year he's he's absolutely buzzing. And if you saw him yesterday morning in his box, he, he's really enjoying life at the moment. What a leap from Alex de Notes at the last. Cleared it, sailed over it, landed three, four lengths ahead. Master Chewy is in second place and giving chase and is just beginning to close. Alex de Notes comes up past the elbow now, leading by two, goes on to win. So I was tempted to leave him in a Tingle Creek, but I know it's not the right thing to do. So we'll, we'll probably wait until um, wait until the Desert Orchid at, at Kempton. But um, just lovely, you know. And Terry Warner's fit enough to be at the races again now. So he was he's been there for the last couple of runs, and we've had some some lovely days. Absolutely, you have. And on Elixir, the notes, given the fact that he's got that refound vigor and verve, he could yet rank a little bit higher potentially this this campaign. Yeah, well, he's he's putting himself into that pitch. You know, he had top weight on, top weight on um, on Saturday. But in 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 a minute, the handicapper is going to force us to to go again. But it, it's quite important with him that we we need to we need to aim him at smaller fields. You know, he he loves he loves not being too crowded and that. So we 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 just got to play it a little bit clever and um and pick and choose a bit. I thought he looked a really happy horse at the weekend. It certainly is. And you know, watching the replay, you know, he jumped like a stag, obviously. And then, but even. When he pulled up, he turned round to walk back, and he, and he started jig jogging, and his ears pricked, and you know he is in a in a very good place for himself at the moment. And you watch the ride that Freddie Ginjal gave him, I and mean, you, you just watch Freddie in the saddle. It looks like an old hand, an old pro, and he's so young, but he has so much potential, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. I mean, obviously, I, I'm very biased because he's my nephew, <laughs> but um, but he's he's riding really well. So he's getting these opportunities because he's riding well. It'd be easy easy for me to just just sort of hide him in. Um, Midweek, you know, but but Fred's riding well enough. And if you saw him score this horse the Wednesday before the Holden Gold Cup, you know, Dad and I were there watching it, and straight away, like he ping fences around our school, and um, you know, Fred's gaining in confidence all the time, and he's learning, and he's loving life at Paul Nichols and and school and Harry Cobden four days a week. You know, it's all working well, and. Um, you know, he's he's not getting a rise purely because of family. You know, he's getting a rise because he's talented enough as well. And his his, his five pound claim at the moment is a gift. Oh yeah, he's earned it for sure, and no better man to learn from than Harry Cobden. Uh, coming up to this weekend, a really interesting meeting at Sandown. Hopefully, it will go ahead. JPR one also, I think, who is impressed so far, and I think we get to see the best of. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, he fell at he fell at Cheltenham last time when when was he was putting up a. A performance that I I expected him to be able to done that. He'd not done, he'd not done that over hurdles, but um, but you know, we loved the horse and we'd seen him schooling and obviously won his first race at Newton Abbott. And then he was just he was kind of showboating the whole way through um, Cheltenham. He didn't do anything wrong, you know. Pinged last and just just put his feet in the middle. Um, you know, I was going to say he jumped it really well. We're just unlucky. Yeah, you know, and, and you know that's, that's that's horse racing, and, and hopefully there'll be bigger days with him. But I was glad he got to the last. You know, I'd hate to have stopped it four out or five out, and then you never know. You know, he was gonna he was gonna win and win impressively. Um, you know, the handicapper thought that as well. They put him up eleven pounds, but you know that doesn't bother me. You know, they, um, we'll take him to to Sandown at the weekend and. Um, he looks to have a real live chance in it. A, a little bit of a, a little bit of, you know, we we've got to go and jump round. But uh, I think everybody that saw him realised it's not he's not a bad jumper. You know, he ping fences around Cheltenham, and um, he seems in fantastic form at home. I mean, I know he fell, but he, he did jump really well at Cheltenham, and you'd almost think that Sandown's fences will play to his strengths. Yeah, he, he, well, he didn't actually fall. You know, it has, and he found a leg, and he popped up, and he just happened to go a bit left, which which left Brendan. You know, just popped him out the side door. So, um, but you know, I, I'm looking forward to him down down those seven down the back the back straight in, in the railway fences. So I think um, I think that'll play to his strengths. I wanted to ask you about the changing man as well. Is he likely to run against Stay Away Fair again? Yeah, we could well do. Um, you know, obviously there's a, there is a novice handicap chase at Cheltenham the following following weekend as well, which um, 
you know, with his with his ratings are fine, you know, he'd, he'd be thrown in there to be honest. Um, the form's already working out very well from Exeter with Grey Dawn and winning up at Haydock. Um, but it just, you know, you should never be afraid of one horse. I actually thought we had him beat two out, and I know I know Stay Away Fail will improve, as as will we, and, and maybe he's a better horse than us at the moment. But, um, you know, it's a lovely race at Sandown. There, there'll probably only be four runners in it, and um, I think I think we'll take our, take our chance. I mean, he he again, he was a horse that progressed all the last year, and you know, finished second four times. But every time he improved, like he's not a horse that. That, that there's any concerns about it, even though it's like, second first time out and um, there's massive improvement from Exeter and um, he does I think he's good enough to be in these these top novice chases as simple as that now he looks like he's much improved tackling those larger obstacles yeah well, first uh, it, the, the forms there you know his first run he was he was wrong at, he's wrong at the at the, at the weights at the, at the ratings but um you know, he had every chance between the second last and the last, and then just got beaten by a horse who's already performed at the Cheltenham Festival. So, um, you know, there's, he's an exciting young horse. Finally, Joe, one wish for Christmas. What would it be? <laughs> one wish for Christmas. There we are. Um, Maybe a Grade One win. <laughs> grade One win would be would be very nice. You know, it's, um, I've been lucky. I've had a few Grade Twos, but. If I have a grade one win on, on that'd be the first in my name, which will be cracking on Saturday. So, so we'll take that and um, just keep the horses in the vein of form they're in at the moment. They're healthy and they're well at the moment, so it makes my job a lot easier. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com. <laughs>